So, there is some exceptions or anomalies to the Agwa principle. Okay, this is the last part for 2.3. Okay, so, ada pengecualian of Agwa principle dekat chromium and also copper atom. Sebab kenapa? Okay, sebagai contoh, kalau if let's say you ada chromium atom. Chromium, uh, dia punya atom enam dia Z equals to 24. Therefore, electron number dia will be equal to 24 lah. Copper atom pun because it's a neutral atom. So, the electron number dia will be just the same as the atomic number 29. Okay. So, if you want to write the chromium, uh, SPDF notation dia akan jadi 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2. 3P6 sambung dengan 3D4, 4S2. Or, kalau you nak tulis dalam short form, you can just tulis dia dalam abbreviation, AR. And then, continue with 3D4 and 4S2. Why? Because argon, dia ad adalah noble gas yang terdekat di dalam periodic table of elements terdekat dengan CR. Okay? So, argon, dia ada sebanyak. 18 elektron. Therefore, argon punya SPDF notation adalah 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. Okay? Uh, so, kalau you nak buat short form, you boleh just terus tulis dalam kurungan AR, 3D4, 4S2. Okay, tapi you sambunglah dengan the next energy level. Janganlah you tulis AR kat depan, lepas you tak sambung dengan apa-apa. Uh, sebab kalau AR saja 18 elektron, you need 24, 24 minus 18. So, you need another 6 electrons to be filled in the next energy level according to alpha principle. Okay, and also for copper, it is expected for you to get this kind of electronic arrangement. But then... Because diorang dua ni special, kenapa special nanti Miss akan terangkan later. So, therefore, dia punya actual actual electronic configuration dia will be for CR. Instead of 3D4, it will be 3D5 for S1. And copper, instead of 3D9, it will be 3D10 for S1. Ah, kenapa? So, let's stay tuned and let's continue. Okay, kalau ikutkan tadi... CR, chromium. Chromium ada 24 electron. And dia ada SPDF notation of AR, 3D, sepatutnya lah, 3D4, 4S2. Tetapi, actually, sebenarnya, it should be AR, 3D5, 4S1. Ah, kenapa ya? Okay, kat sini, you boleh nampak if you expand kan electronic configuration of CR ni dari dalam bentuk atomic orbital. So, this is the atomic orbital untuk chromium. Uh, which is dalam kurungan, still AR dalam kurungan. And then 3D4, 4S2. Tetapi, actually, the actual electronic configuration untuk CR is 3D5, 4S1. Kenapa macam tu ya? Okay, sebab so, if you look at here, if let's say, dia dikecualikan sebab apa tau? Sebab, bila let's say, you have fill kan 3D ni, D electron, let's say, if it is fully fill, you boleh fill dia sebanyak 10 electron kan? Okay. Tapi, kalau in this case, satu electron di S ni, jam to 3D. Okay? So, that's why jadi 3D5. So, now, D ada 5. Okay, so now D ada 5 electrons. So, if you look at here, D akan ada half fill D orbital stability. Okay? Sebabkan this kind of stability, half fill, kita panggil dia sebagai half fill D orbital stability. Okay? D orbital dia tahu bukan 4S. Uh, 4S ni memang lah sebabkan dia jadi half sebab kita nak jadikan di orbital ni half fill orbital. Okay, because kita nak bagi um, ada extra stability. Okay, because half fill di orbital akan menyebabkan chromium ni lagi stable. Uh, 
uh, kita we don't care about for S1 we care about the half fill in the d orbital okay so this result because a half fill d orbital other extra added stability previously we are talking about chromium but what about copper kenapa copper pun ada pengecualian okay copper previously on the first um, slide we know that copper ada 29 electron therefore because ada 29 electron dia punya spdf notation dia should be ar 3d9 for s2 Okay, kalau ikutkan apa prinsip lah. Okay lah, memanglah actually kalau you tulis apa prinsip ni, actually kan kalau ikutkan you look, tulis 4S baru 3D kan. Ha, macam tu, tapi sebenarnya dia tak kisah pun. Asalkan you isi dulu dekat 4S barulah 3D. Okay, alright. Kalau ikutkan apa prinsip, it should be for S2 3D9. But then... Uh, because copper pun ada anomaly, ada pengecualian, therefore, um, the correct, the actual electronic configuration should be 3D10 for S1. Why so? Okay, kalau you nak tahu kenapa, so you boleh spread the electronic configuration in atomic orbital, okay? Baru you boleh nampak. Uh, so, kalau let's say, um, kalau ikutkan, Kalau ikutkan, it should be um, 3D9 for S2. But then, sebab kita nak achieve stability of the d orbital here. d orbital ni, dia sama ada dia completely fill ataupun dia half fill. Baru dia dapat extra added stability. Because of that, um, satu elektron dekat 1S ni will be donated kepada 3D. Okay, so now 3D akan dapat 10 electron. So if you look at the atomic orbital, you will know that this D orbital already achieved um, the stability. Why? Because this D orbital adalah a fully filled, a fully filled D orbital. Okay, so that's why lah. Um, kalau you nak tulis electronic configuration of copper, you can buat 3D10 baru for S1. We don't care kalau let's say for S ni jadi half. We don't care about stability of the S. We care about the stability of the D orbital. Okay. So that's why chromium and copper, dia ada anomalous kat situ. Sebab copper, because dia bila let's say dia terima satu electron daripada 4S, makanya dia akan jadi a completely filled D orbital. So therefore, dia akan possess an extra added stability. Chromium, um, dia pun 3D5 so it's a half filled D orbital sama juga dia akan dapat extra added stability next example it asks you to predict the electron configuration of a stable anion or cation for the following element if let's say you ada element A, B, C and D macam mana you nak tahu dia stable ke tidak and these are diorang punya respective electronic configuration ok, ok I know that Kalau ikutkan alpha principle, I know that alpha principle always say that isi dekat 4S energy level baru 3D. Okay. I know that previously if you tulis SPDF notation ke atomic orbital, mesti you buat 4S dulu baru 3D. But if you look at here, the electronic configuration here, actually, dia macam buat 3D baru 4S. Ah, salah ke? Actually, it's not that wrong point. Asalkan you kena ingat, you kena tahu. Kena isi dulu elektron di 4S, isi dulu elektron dekat 4S, baru 3D. Tapi kalau you nak remove, if it's an ion, nak remove, kena remove dulu elektron dekat 4S, barulah followed by 3D. Okay? Uh, kiranya, kalau if you look at the uh, table here, although they bought 3P6, 3D10 for S2, tak ada perubahan sangat pun because why? Uh, because actually, dia memang ikut rules of bow nak mengisi. Dia isi dekat 4S, uh, 4S dahulu baru 3D. Cuma, dia tulis, tulis tak ikut of bow. 
Okey. Tapi dia isi, dia memang isi mengikut akhbar prinsipal. So, tak ada masalah pun. So, let's look at the element A. Just look at my predict the electron configuration of a stable anion or cation kan for this following element. So, untuk element A, kalau you nak tahu element A ni stable ke tak, it should get um, charge of 2 minus. Kalau charge 2 minus, maksudnya apa? Kalau charge 2 minus, maksudnya dia accept 2 electron. Macam mana you tahu kalau let's say A2 minus dia stable? So, you tengoklah, this is dia punya electronic configuration yang pada asalnya, kan? Tapi, bila dia accept saja dua elektron, makanya dia akan jadi 3p6, right? Dia akan dapat 3p6. So, 3p6, kat situ you ada stability of a fully filled p orbitals, okay? So, that's why A2- will be the um, suitable, stable, Ions untuk element A. Next, let's move on to element B. Element B actually dia stable bila B minus. Bila dia accept one electron. Kenapa? Bila dia accept one electron, therefore dia akan dapat 4p6. Okay, the outermost shell dia ialah 4p kan. Okay, so nak tahu you, dia punya stability ke tak, you kena tengok dia punya last shell. Last shell dia adalah P. P Um, fully filled orbital untuk P adalah 6. So, di situ uh, kalau let's say nak dapat 4P6, B kena jadi B minus lah. Okay. Next, let's move on to element C. Element C, if you look at here, element C berada pada dia punya outermost shell dia adalah 3S. 3S kan as what I told you it doesn't mean anything sangat pun dia tunggang terbalik macam mana pun it doesn't mean anything that much therefore you need to get rid of this S orbital supaya P dapat a fully filled P orbital ok so bila let's say nak get rid of the S orbital so dia akan remove lah 2 elektron kan so bila remove 2 elektron makanya dia akan dapat charge 2 positive here because dia Um, lose 2 electron. Okay. Therefore, element C will be at stable state. Okay. Alright. Element D pula. Again, ha, element D, you tengok ni. Bila let's say ada 3D dengan 4S, uh, memang special ni. Okay. Sebab bila let's say you nak add, you kena add dekat 4S dulu. Baru 3D. Kan. Kalau you nak remove, you remove. 4S dulu baru 3D. So, if you look at here, there's a chance of removing the S orbital here supaya D dapat a fully filled orbital. Okay? So, untuk dapat stability of a fully filled orbital, D orbital, maka you have to remove the S here. The S orbital. So, bila nak remove S, you tahu S ada satu elektron. Tolak saja dengan satu. Bila dia tolak satu elektron, makanya D akan dapat positive charge because they lose one electron because they not get rid of this S here. Therefore, sekarang D akan jadi stable because D element, dia ada extra added stability when the D orbital here is a fully filled orbital. Last one, I would like you to try this. Write the ground state electronic configuration for Cu and explain. So, how do you want to write this Y? Okay, so first, You write dulu dia punya predicted. Okay, predicted um, SPDF notation untuk CU. Okay, so you write that one first. Lepas tu, you write the actual SPDF notation untuk CU. Bila you dah write kan orang berdua, So, this is the reason why. Okay, so I am quite generous here sebab Miss bagi tahu reason dekat sini. Why? Uh, you saling dia sebab apa? Because the completely filled 3D orbital has special stability and the difference in energy between 4S orbital and 3D orbital is not that significant point. Thus, one of the paired electron in 4S moves to 3D orbital. Okay? 
uh, pokok pantainya inilah reason dia yang paling uh, paling point sekali paling memberi point dan memberi marka which is kenapa sebab completely filled radio orbital ada at special stability ataupun at extra stability okey kepada t orbital alright so i think that's all uh, from me untuk subtopik 2.3 so i hope that you faham okay so for anything if you don't understand you can just ask me in the tutorial question all right so thank you for your time